Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session, and good morning. So I'm Ruslan, I'm a product manager at Google, and I spend a lot of time on uh, declarative infrastructure. And a big focus of mine is to help you, you know, have the best user experience with Terraform on GCP. So you have to enjoy the journey, not the destination. So I think the answer that I'd give you really depends on when you ask me this question, right? And so at a previous company, I was at a really large information company, and I started off as a contractor, then I became a virtualization engineer, and eventually a lead automation engineer. And you know, I helped provision, get infrastructure provisioning down from about 30 plus days to 30 minutes. And I know it sounds awesome, but that was without Terraform. Uh, so it was infrastructure the hard way. And, but the journey didn't begin there, right? Because like at the end of the journey, it was like, it was amazing. Like it was awesome. Like everything was great. But the journey when it started was not so awesome, right? Uh, and so when it started, there was a, a, an automation team that was called the A-team. And these guys were like pros. These guys were awesome. Um, and they all decided to leave in a very, very short period of time for whatever reason. And so that was my opportunity, right? So I was able to come in and take on everything, and I said, ah, how hard can this be, right? This is not too bad, right? But truth be told, uh, it was really, really, really hard. The journey was not easy in the beginning, right? Um, and so eventually, I learned about this thing called Terraform. And so that moment, I realized that I could have probably saved about 80% of my time, and so I questioned everything that I've ever done. Uh, the cool part is that it actually led me to, to join HashiCorp, and then eventually I became a CE at Google, and you know, now I'm a PM at Google. Uh, and so you have to enjoy the journey in order to actually reach the destination. And if you don't enjoy it, it's going to be extremely, extremely painful. And so this session today is actually about three things, right? The first thing is that we want you to enjoy your journey. And so everything I'm gonna share with you today hopefully makes that journey just a little bit better. And number two, we wanna make sure that, you know, we start this feedback loop, because like everything we have today is great, but like we also wanna make sure we get the feedback and we, you know, hear from you and we know exactly like, you know, how to make this better, right? Help us help you. Uh, lastly, uh, we wanna make sure that no matter who you are, whether you're a learner, a builder, or an operator, we want to make sure that you can you know, onboard onto GCP with Terraform in a very easy way. You know a little bit about me. I'm Ruslan Said, and I want to introduce uh, you know, Oase and Pulkit, who can introduce themselves real quick. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm Pulkit Chandra. I am the director of product for uh, Terraform, and I focus primarily on all the integrations that surround Terraform. Uh, my name Malik, and I am a solution architect with Google Cloud. Um, my specialty is infrastructure automation, and later today I'm going to be talking about a, um, a demo that we've built to help customers kind of move their solutions to Terraform Cloud and, and, and work with them in there. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, so today's fairly simple. We're going to talk about how you're going to adopt, build, and scale Terraform on GCP. Uh, Pulkit will give you some updates from HashiCorp, and then we'll do a demo, and then we'll hopefully have some Q&A. All right, before we get started, just I need a quick raise of hands. I just want to kind of know who everybody is. So who in here is just getting started with Terraform? If you can just like raise your hand. And if you're, keep your hands up, and if you're enjoying the journey, keep your hands up. If you're not, put your hands down. A few of you put your hands down, all right. Uh, and how many of you are like the Terraform OGs? Like you got like five years of experience. There we go. Nice, keep your hands up now. If you're enjoying the journey, keep them up. If you're not, oh, if you went down, okay, interesting. Uh, how many of you are developers that are also doing Terraform? And are you enjoying the journey? Oh, yes, I kind of expected that. Developers don't really want to do everything about Terraform, right? They want, to, they want to write their code, and so I get that. And lastly, like, how many of you are in like a cloud platform or an SRE team? Okay, a bunch of you. All right, are you enjoying the journey? Keep your hands up. A few of you, okay, put it down. All right, so all of you that dropped your hands, meet us outside. I'd love to get your feedback and, and hear all about exactly why that journey is not going so well, right? We're here to help you out. So uh, before we get any further, I want to level set. What's Terraform? I think most of us know what Terraform is, right? You have a user, describe the config file. They're going to use Terraform with some providers. 
and then those providers are gonna give you access to certain resources. In this case, like we have the Google Cloud provider that's gonna give you access to certain resources on Google Cloud, but you may have other providers as well, right? So the process is pretty much the same. Uh, but the, 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 the benefit to our customers, right, is really about, number one is that single workflow. I mean, I think nobody can deny, like you have one workflow to do it all, right? The other thing is that it's infrastructure as code, so it's code, and you get to do all the things with code, right? Like version control and rollbacks and collaboration and all that good stuff. And lastly, right, it's much easier to adopt new infrastructure in the future once you're already using Terraform. So I think that's, that's really awesome, right? So what we wanna do now is actually focus a little bit more on the Google Cloud provider and specifically like resource coverage. And so most of the resource coverage that you're gonna need is already covered, right? It's in the provider. Uh, but the question is like, how do the resources actually get added into the provider? And so someone has to spend some time adding that in. Uh, and so traditionally we had the Terraform team like for a very long time, for years, they've been adding these resources, they prioritize, they stack rank, and like, you know, they make sure they add all the resources they can. But you know, it's a handful of people, right? And it's not very easy. And so what is Google doing differently? In order to scale coverage, what we're doing is we're working with product and engineering teams and service teams to basically help you know, scale this out a little bit. So we're onboarding teams, we're making sure that they can like, you know, uh, add these resources faster. And so like the ultimate goal for us is to have day zero support. And you may get that in some cases, you're not gonna get it for everything, right? But that's our, like, that's our dream, right? We want day zero coverage for everything. You got a service that comes out on GCP, it's available on Terraform. Um, and lastly, HashiCorp, right? I mean, the partnership with HashiCorp is, is, is definitely like, it's pivotal for Hashi and Google, but I think more importantly for our customers, like we wanna give you the best experience. So we work on a weekly basis, we work all the time, we triage you know, uh, issues, and, and we make sure we resolve issues in a timely manner. Now, I've spoken to hundreds of customers over the last few years, and I gotta say, like, yes, the provider is the most important thing. Without the provider, you have nothing. Uh, but the fact is that there's way more that you care about than just the provider. And so today, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of these things, right? And so, like, we've heard you. We know that, you know, you want more. And so, hopefully, what we discuss today is gonna help you enjoy your journey just a little bit more. Now the first thing is, right, we have, uh, we're proud to announce that we actually have Terraform support on Google Cloud. And now, you know, this is in partnership with HashiCorp and, you know, it's, it's for premium support customers actually, right? And so what does this mean? It means that the support team is going to triage these issues. They're going to, you know, either resolve them if they can. If they can't, then they're gonna forward it to the right team, right? Whether it's the service team or the Terraform team, or if it's Terraform core issues, they're gonna send it to HashiCorp, right? Um, and so hopefully this is gonna make your experience a lot better. Um, and if you have HashiCorp support and Google Cloud support, then that makes it even better. <laughs> and you'll have even a better experience there. Um, and so what does this cover? It covers the GCP Terraform provider issues, the API issues, uh, and also like I mentioned, the Terraform core issues. But what this doesn't cover is actually the uh, configuration. So like if you have blueprints and stuff like that, it won't actually cover that. But what you should do is reach out to your account teams, your CEs, et cetera, right? Like there's like a whole bunch of them. We partner with HashiCorp that have certified on Terraform. Everyone's learning more and more about Terraform. And then we got those folks who aren't certified and they're like Terraform gurus, right? So talk to your account teams and get help there as well. And if all else fails, please reach out to me and reach out to my team. Oh. All right, so I'm actually also excited to partner with the Google Cloud community in 2023. We're doing a lot more with Terraform, right? We wanna make sure that you know, we provide you live training and enablement sessions, and so you know, stay tuned for that. If you sign up, you'll get those updates. So the Google Cloud community is actually, you know, it's gonna allow you to get access to experts, you know, thousands and thousands of them, your peers and Googlers, and some of who are actually building and, and creating your products, right? So if you wanna take advantage of this, right, it's free to sign up. Uh, you know, you can ask questions, you can participate, uh, maybe, you know, get some free prizes with some learning challenges, et cetera, but I definitely recommend this. It's gonna keep you up to date. All right, so this is, uh, we just recently launched our first version of the maturity model, the Terraform on GCP maturity model. Now, this is our attempt to help you better understand where you are, if you're a learner, a builder, or an operator, like how can you adopt Terraform on GCP? Uh, you scan this barcode to get all the details, right? We're not gonna go through everything today, uh, but this is definitely gonna cover a lot of things. And we partnered with HashiCorp on this and through customer feedback. And if you didn't get the QR code, don't worry, we'll make sure we get it after. <laughs> 
All right, first step, right, uh, is, is the first phase is adopt. And so you might be a developer, you might be new to GCP, you know, new to Terraform, et cetera. And so like, here's some great resources to get started. One of the first ones is our Terraform docs page. Um, our goal is to work you know, with the content team and to make sure that we get all Terraform stuff into one place. And so this is our dream, right? Like, we wanna make sure everything is there, but like, we definitely need your feedback, right? We'll iterate on this, we'll improve, um, and so make it better and better over time. Now, once you have the provider and you have the resources, I think the next most important thing is the blueprints, right? But blueprints is an overloaded term. You may or may not already know this, right? But I wanna just make sure I clarify this. If I say blueprints or modules in this talk uh, the rest of the time, right, like they're pretty much interchangeable, but I do wanna describe the differences a little bit, right? And so blueprints are actually the golden standard of, you know, uh, of modules, in our opinion, right? And so they're gonna give you all those things. They're gonna give you the resource diagram, they're gonna give you tests, they're gonna give you all the good stuff. Um, and so the way I'd summarize it is that, you know, all blueprints include modules, not all modules are blueprints. Hopefully that makes sense. So at a high level, I wanna cover three things, right? So if you're just learning to use resources, I'd recommend the one on the left, and that's samples, right? So they're very quick to get started, and you're just learning, and like they're pretty, pretty fast. Some of them are a little lengthy, but mostly they're very quick examples. And if you're looking for opinionated solutions on GCP, then I'd recommend the center one, which is Cloud Foundation Toolkit. And if you're looking, if, like, and if you're comfortable building modules yourself and you have experience, right, I'd recommend the Cloud Foundation Fabric on the right-hand side. And that's a whole session by itself, so we're not gonna go too deep in that. Uh, this is Jumpstart Solutions. Oasis is gonna go into this in a little more detail. Um, you know, this is basically pre-built applications and infrastructure best practices, right? You can deploy with a few clicks onto your Google Cloud account. And this is gonna give you hands-on experience, it's gonna give you interactive environment. And so why would you actually do this, right? The reason is like you wanna accelerate um, your path towards building your own apps. You also wanna make sure that you can quickly build confidence and get familiar with the Google Cloud you know, products. And plus, we're gonna give you reference architecture, guides, walkthroughs, et cetera, and all of that. So it's gonna help you get started really quickly. Uh, another thing we wanna announce is that we have uh, this thing called Infrastructure Manager. And Infrastructure Manager, like, Oasis is gonna talk about it more, but what I wanna share with you is that Google is actually leveraging Infra Manager on our solution. So in the previous example, Jumpstart, you can deploy with a few clicks, and that capability is provided through Infrastructure Manager. The other thing is that uh, Infra Manager actually went GA recently, and so you can actually play around with it. You know, you can scan the QR code, you can take a look uh, and see if that's interesting to you. Um, and so again, like I mentioned, there's a lot more things on the, on, the, on the guide, right? I think one of the main things I'd mentioned is like the, the cloud skill boost. Like we have some really good trainings here if you're interested in the training, there's like four and a half, five stars, thousands of reviews, uh, lots of Terraform sessions. There's also a Terraform certification prep. Uh, it's actually really, really good, very well received. Now as a builder, Right, you already have experience with infrastructure, you may already have experience with GCP, right? And so you may be a developer, you may be an SRE, you may be a platform admin or a cloud team, right? Um, and now, so when you're learning, right, uh, you may not have all the foundations in place, uh, you know, and it takes some time. So if you're not familiar, we have the Google Cloud Security Foundation, right? It's gonna basically give you an opinionated view of Google Cloud's best practices. And now, you know, what is Cloud Setup? So Cloud Setup is a multi-step guide that's gonna give you the ability to walk through and, and lay out your foundations. And at the end, you have the choice. You can either click and deploy, which again, uses Infra Manager, or you can download the Terraform configurations and you'll be able to deploy it in your own pipelines. And this is also another cool feature. If you've ever been in the, in the console and you've you know, filled out a VM form and then you said, give me the equivalent REST or give me the equivalent you know, CLI, now you can also get the equivalent Terraform commands. This won't work for every product, but our product teams are working to integrate this and make it better. And I'd recommend like, reaching out to the product teams and letting them know like, you wanna see this faster. All right, again, like before, there's definitely lots of other you know, material there for you to look at. And mainly it's like, if you wanna customize blueprints, customize Jumpstart solutions, right? Um, you wanna create your own blueprints, you wanna create your own modules, you want some more advanced set, you know, uh, uh, cloud skill boost and all of that, right? You'll get access to all of that. 
And now how do you scale? So as an operator, right, um, you already have experience with Google Cloud. You have experience with Terraform, right? Uh, a lot more than others, right? But you may be on a platform team, maybe on a cloud team, an SRE team, et cetera. But how do you scale Terraform on GCP? We could talk about this for hours, so I'm not gonna do that to you today. It's gonna cover a few things. The, the main thing here, I think, is the, our best practices. We spend a lot of time on this. It's a comprehensive best practice guide. You could start when you're adopting, you could start when you're building, of course, but like if, you're, if your goal is to scale, uh, you definitely wanna you know, look through this. And, and more importantly, right, there's a lot of variables. It's not very straightforward. There's a lot of pieces, and, and a lot of teams that I've talked to, they typically just get started, and they figure out the best practices along the way, and then you realize like, it's not so easy to like, fix everything again, right? And so talk to HashiCorp, talk to Google, and let us help you like, kind of figure out like, what the best practices are and how you, know, you can get started. Uh, but also when you're scaling, right, the, the decisions you make early on are gonna dictate how you are gonna enjoy that journey, right? And so the more best practices you know, you, you're, you're familiar with, I think the better experience you're gonna have on GCP. So the, as an operator, you have lots and lots of decisions to make, right? Like we get questions all the time, like, w you know, how do you take advantage of the producer consumer model? How do you scale on GCP? What are the best practices, you know, policy, governance, et cetera? So there's a lot of different things. But one of the most popular questions I think is build versus buy. And I think everyone here at some point has gone through some sort of experience around build versus buy. Um, when I think of build versus buy, I can think of one particular personal story. And I just want to share that with you today. So in 2015, my wife and I, we purchased our first home. Long story short, uh, we wanted to do some renovation. We hired a contractor, which started off as like this little reno turned into an entire gut job, right? Like I gutted the entire house and all the bathrooms, <laughs> which is a whole nother story of why I did that. It was definitely a mistake. Uh, but you know, like my contractor decided a few weeks in that like, he's gonna leave me. Uh, and so I talked to my wife, I was like, we got this, like we're gonna do this ourselves. And, and we decided to do it ourselves. Uh, and so the journey began. Now, that smile is genuine, but that guy don't know what I know, 100%. Uh, and so, you know, my wife, she was, you know, my wife, Huma, she's uh, an interior designer or, or for this house she was. Uh, and change orders weren't a thing for her, right? Like she just makes changes and I just have to implement those changes. She was like my first customer as a general contractor, my first and last actually. Uh, and I did everything. I was the floor guy, I was the mason, I was the, you know, I, I did all of it, the plumbing, the electrical, even the HVAC system. Um, and I learned a ton, right? And of course I hired help. That's my daughter, Iman, she's helping. And it's free labor, which is great. Uh, but long story short, I moved in in 2017. Now, the end results are truly awesome. Like, of course, like, I'm so happy. Like, we spent all this time, we spent all this money, but like, we have a home and, and we're very, very happy, right? Uh, and I learned a lot. And, and it's not just about building a home, I learned a lot about myself, right? Like, in that process. Um, and I also learned what I'm capable of. And I think in tech, right, that's kind of what it's about. Like, when we build, like, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to learn, and, and, and through that process, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much you bang your head on the keyboards, like, at the end of the day, that growth and that learning is, is all what it's about, right? So there's a definitely value there. But then if you ask me today, 100%, I enjoyed this journey. Now, this is where the story gets interesting. So three months before I moved in, my neighbor, he buys a house, and he gutted the whole thing, and not only that, he built an entire second floor. And he moved in exactly when I moved in. So to put it all into perspective, like yes, money's a factor, right? But I spent a lot of money as well, just like he did. But in three months, he had a whole brand new house and he moved in with me. Now, what does this have to do with building infrastructure? In my opinion, I think a lot. Right? Collectively in here, we probably have decades of experience of infrastructure configuration management, uh, maybe centuries, I'm not sure, right? Uh, and in some way, you know, I think most of you probably know where I'm going with this already. Um, and so on one end, I could build you a house today, right? I know my house inside and out. And like many of you, you know your systems inside and out. Um, and so I know what's behind the walls. If something breaks, I know exactly how to fix it. Um, and, but if someone were to buy my house, 
we're probably going to struggle a little bit, maybe, right? Like they don't know everything like I know. Um, and so now if I were ever to build you a house again, I can do it better. I can do it more cost effectively. I can make sure it's, I can do it faster um, because I've learned through that process. And that's, I think, what build gives you, right? It's like it's going to give you that experience over time. Now, here are the facts. It took me two years to move in. It took me two years of mortgages. It took me two years of living with my parents. That was great, it's not a bad thing, but like I put them at inconvenience, and two years of my life and no time with my family that I can never get back. And if you ask me today, would I ever go back and change it? I probably wouldn't, because I did learn a lot and I really appreciated it, but I 100% would do things a little differently. So, here are some considerations, right? Our intention is not to tell you what decision to make, whether you build or you buy. What our intention is, is to help customers to make well-informed decisions, right? Um, you may have different needs, right? Maybe you have different automation needs. Maybe you have different support needs, right? And security and, 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 and compliance needs. Maybe you're re in terms of resources, you don't have all the in-house talents. Maybe you do, right? And it all depends. In terms of budget, but it's real, it's a thing, right? Like you gotta actually consider it. And so all of that factors in. Um, and so there's a lot of additional considerations as well, like organizational culture, timeline, et cetera, and all of that stuff. Uh, but what we want you to do is to choose your own adventure, right? Like Google has providing you some solutions and some documents and some tools and all of that to make your life a little bit better, to make your journey a little bit better. Hashi is going to provide you with Terraform, Terraform Enterprise, Terraform Cloud, and all of that, right? And the demo Waste is going to show you is going to show you how you can actually get started now. You don't have to make the decision right away, but then later on you can migrate to another solution like Terraform Cloud. Right? And, and how are we going to make that easier for you? So, as you embark on this journey to automate your infrastructure, please remember to enjoy the ride. And if you need help along the way, we're here for you. And with that, thank you for listening. I'm going to hand it off to Pulkit. Thank you. All right, continuing the journey, uh, I'm going to share uh, some of the updates that uh, HashiCorp uh, is trying to invest continuously in Terraform and what are the, some of the latest things that we are uh, looking at. All right. Um, so first off, Terraform and Google, as uh, Arslan was talking about, like the partnership is really strong. We are building a lot of things together. Uh, and our focus right now is uh, we make it extremely easy for customers to do uh, deployment of Terraform Enterprise on Google Cloud uh, and uh, Google Kubernetes engine, in fact. So with this flexible deployment option that we uh, recently released in beta and will be going GA pretty soon, you can actually run Terraform Enterprise on uh, any kind of cloud infrastructure. And uh, Kubernetes is one of the favorite ones for a lot of customers and GK is one of the best places to run Kubernetes. So that's what we support. Uh, oops, I made a mistake, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, the previous one, I, I forgot to mention one thing, which is like agents. So another thing that we're working on is uh, agents uh, architecture that you can actually run something in your uh, in private infrastructure or uh, some different cloud when you're using Terraform Cloud. And uh, the agents would help you uh, manage some of the operations locally. Uh, that's a pull-based system, uh, and uh, it's pretty effective, especially for companies that are more <coughs> compliance and security focused. Here's the one that I wanted to talk about, which is flexible deployment option, now available, uh, something that you can run on GKE. And uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have seen uh, with Terraform Enterprise is that it's available on uh, Replicated, and uh, there has been some uh, opinions that our customer wanted some dip, some of the different type of deployment options and uh, now with flexible deployment option you can actually deploy it in different different uh, infrastructure and uh, GKE being one of them. The next up is Terraform Cloud Operator for Kubernetes. Uh, now as, as you all are aware that uh, Terraform Cloud is a SaaS solution and it, it, it's, uh, it runs fine, it, it's available, but a lot of times customers want a more native Kubernetes experience. What this operator brings in is that Terraform Cloud functionality to the Kubernetes system. 
and uh, you can use functionalities like drift detection checks uh, and access the large, very stable Terraform provider ecosystem inside of Kubernetes using Kubernetes native APIs. So that's a pretty convenient way of uh, giving this functionality to our users. And we'll continue to invest in this. We'll continue to expand its uh, operations as, as we go along. That's uh, currently available in beta. It's gonna go GA very soon. Uh, we'll probably announce more at KubeCon. Um, speaking of uh, cloud agents that we have introduced before, we have a lot of investments going in that direction. And, uh, and those cloud agents, as I said, like this is more uh, a, a system where you can, uh, the agents can actually pull information from the Terraform cloud. So a much more of a pull-based mechanism, much more secure, uh, and doesn't really require something that is sitting outside of your network to reach inside. Uh, and so it's much more secure. And uh, we plan to have, uh, sorry, I have some mistakes in the notes, yeah. Perfect, so uh, we have uh, these modules which are uh, available uh, with the Terraform Cloud, uh, sorry, Google Cloud, which Avace is also gonna probably touch on, uh, that we developed in conjunction with Google. And uh, it basically allows you to deploy agents on uh, managed infrastructure and uh, Google, uh, container engines, uh, et cetera. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Avace. Thanks, Fokit. So for this part of the presentation, we're gonna look at a demo of this thing called Jumpstart Solutions and a proof of concept application that we built called Super um, that can help customers evolve solution management as they step through the maturity model that Arslan just talked about a few minutes ago. Um, so let's take that maturity model and overlay that on top of a typical journey of a customer um, that's adopting GCP as their cloud provider. Um, the first thing they'll typically do is explore what GCP has to offer in terms of product and services, right? Um, next, they'll try to learn how to set up those typical use cases, uh, for example, a web application or a data warehouse um, on using those services and products. Um, once they get comfortable with the, the setup and initial you know, use cases, they'll want to evolve those solutions and make them their own. Um, something a little more production grade, something with customer requirements, more secure before they open that up to the masses, right? And while they're doing that, um, change management and governance is going to become a priority. Um, more specifically, how do you make sure that you're, you're promoting changes to your code base of your application as well as the underlying infrastructure in a controlled manner? So to help with this journey, um, we've done a couple of things. Number one, we've got this uh, feature called JSS, um, Jumpstart Solutions, that helps with the earlier part of the journey, which is exploring and learning. And then we have this concept uh, called Swooper. Right now, it's not part of the console yet. Uh, but we'd like your feedback if that's something like you'd like to see there. Uh, which is going to help with the latter part of the journey, which is building and operating. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and, and look at this demo here. Let me try to get this set up. Okay. So to start off, uh, you know, let's just assume that this is a customer that is beginning their journey with Google Cloud. And um, you know, the, the good place to be there is um, Jumpstart Solutions. It's going to give you a list of opinionated solutions authored by Google Cloud um, that you can leverage quickly. For this demo, we're gonna take a look at this three-tier web application. And clicking on that card is going to bring up the solutions detail page, which tells me everything I need to know about the solution, right? I have the description here. I can tell the products being used within the solution um, and also how they kind of connect with each other in a logical manner. Um, there's Cloud Run, there's Cloud SQL, Memory Store, and VPC serverless access for Cloud Run. Uh, the diagram kind of depicts what's going on there, right? 
Um, additionally, I've got some more information like um, the, the, the price and the deployment time and so on and so forth. There's a couple ways you can deploy this. You can deploy it directly through the console or you can actually go through um, GitHub if that's what you prefer to do, download uh, the code base directly available there and use the Terraform CLI, CLI to do that directly. But since you know, we're learning and exploring, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that directly here. Um, select the project, configure a few details like region and zone, review the settings, and then hit deploy. So with that, you have the solution deployed within GCP. Um, this basically uses this new service that we just went GA with recently called Infrastructure Manager, uh, which is essentially a managed Terraform deployment experience. You give it a configuration, um, it gives you the resources based on those configurations, and it manages the state for you. So it has a Terraform runner and everything, and it basically gives you what you ask for while managing the state for you. Um, so in a minute here, we'll see that this solution is deployed. And there you have it. So this solution essentially at this point has joined some of the other solutions we have, that we've deployed in this project. So let's just take a pause and see what we did. We, we were exploring, we learned about certain solutions, we picked three tier web app and we went ahead and deployed it, right? So let's assume as a customer, I wanna take that three tier web app and I wanna extend it, right? What do I need for that? Um, number one, I'm at the very least going to need a forked instance of the code base, right, uh, that I can extend. Because right now this code base is publicly, it's, it's read only. I need to take that and I need to start extending it. And then secondly, I need a workspace space where I can collaborate with my team members that have the Terraform runner in it. So if I make changes to my code base, those changes can actually travel up to the GCP resources as they reconcile. So to address that challenge, uh, we're gonna see how super our uh, proof of concept is going to address that. So we're gonna bring up super here. So like I said, it's not in the console yet, uh, but it works off the public APIs and right now it's connected to um, the same project where we had the solutions deployed. So we select that project and we have all the listing here. Now, our goal is to move the tiered web app solution right at the top into Terraform Cloud, right? Because that's where we're gonna start making changes to it. Um, but I'm gonna here pause for a second here just to kind of explain a few more things. Um, so we, we need a space for the Git repository that we can extend. So for that, we need to configure a host such as GitHub where we can put that code, right? And the second place is a workspace where we can actually collaborate with our team members and review changes as they come in. So for that, we're gonna select Terraform Cloud, right? So these are the two hosts that we're gonna go ahead and configure within this application here. So there's Terraform Cloud being configured in a bit. So we can bring it up. We'll give it an ID and a name. And since this is Terraform Cloud, the host will be app.terraform.io. If you choose to do this in a uh, privately hosted Terraform Enterprise version, that's also possible. The auth token would have access to create workspaces and there you have that registered. We're, doing, we're gonna do the same thing for the Git host as well, for the repository. And we'll do that there. ID name and since, um, this is a demo, I'm just gonna use my personal uh, GitHub host account here to create the repository and the auth token would have access to create repositories in my organization. So we have the prereqs set up now and let's go back to deployments and we'll try to migrate this. Um, so we're gonna bring up the migration panel and we selected the host there from cloud which has access to this GCP migration organization in Terraform Cloud, right? And that's the workspace that we're gonna create in there. Similarly, uh, the GitHub host that we selected here has access to create repositories and that's the, what the repository name is going to be. And with that, we're just gonna go ahead and hit migrate. 
And now the migration has started, right? So there's a few things happening here. Number one, we're setting up a Terraform workspace. Number two, we're cloning the code from the existing JSS uh, code base to the Git repository where we just created the, the repository. Number three, we're taking the state out of Infra Manager where it was being managed within GCP. We're taking that state and putting it in Terraform workspace now. So there's no changes when it reconciles. And then lastly, the new repository that we just created, we're connecting it to the workspace so it can start to track changes there, right? And now um, we can tell that it's, it's been migrated. And at this point, the solution that we wanted to make our own, we have it available in, in Terraform Workspace where we, we can start making changes to it and start reconciling it. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Migration, so yeah, that's the last migration that we just did. And we'll go ahead and see how things are looking in Terraform Cloud world, right? So that's the workspace that we just did and we can see that it is currently planning. So it's just trying to figure out, is there any changes here that I need to reconcile? But because we brought the state over, there's not gonna be any changes here to do. Um, it turned green, so the details would confirm that as well. Zero changes to the resources. And now, let's start extending this, right? So um, the GitHub link right on the top there is gonna take us to the Git repository where we actually cloned and, and uh, forked that repository that we took from JSS, right? So that's our repository there. And we'll change it to the branch that the workspace is tracking for changes. And uh, we'll just go ahead and make a very insignificant change like maybe add a label to one of the resources just to demonstrate that it's working. And we'll go ahead and do this directly in GitHub. It's a pretty, pretty nice interface here. Um, scroll down. And there we have it, right? So we'll just go ahead and add a label called Managed by Terraform Cloud. And we'll go ahead and commit this change directly to the branch. Um, now, in, in, in a real world scenario, obviously, you're not going to do this. You're probably going to have a better GitOps process than that. Uh, but for the purpose of demonstration, we're just going to do it there. And we commit the changes. And just to make sure that that's the only change that we did, we'll look at the history for that commit. That's the only change, right? Now, theoretically, this should uh, be propagated up to the workspace where we can review it. And we can see that now it has started planning. So shortly, it should show that there's a change that needs to be reconciled. And there it is, right? So there is one change. And if we look at the details, we should see that that was the resource that we changed and that was the change that we made to the resource. And if this looks good to me as a code reviewer and a prover, I can go ahead and put my comments, apply it, and this change would actually propagate all the way to the resource platform in this case. So just recapping what we did here, we started off our journey with just exploring and learning about products. We picked up a use case, we deployed it very quickly using the Infra Manager all within GCP. Now we wanted to extend it. We took out the solution from Infra Manager, put it into Terraform Cloud, and now we can start making more changes and kind of scale that, uh, that process a, a lot more. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You.